At this point, I like to start installing all of the miscellaneous hardware on the bike. So I'm going to start with the derailleur hanger. Now this is something that's going to be specific to your frame. Uh, now this could also be different if you're using a single speed frame. There's going to be a little bit of a different setup here. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the frame manufacturer should either include this with your bike or they will have a specific uh, part number, model number, so that way this fits because there are quite a few different styles. Uh, now as far as the little nut and bolt that holds this on, uh, those are pretty standard. Uh, see if you can get a close up on how this guy looks. Uh, there are two little notches on the inside piece, so you could stick a flathead screwdriver there if you needed to. Uh, I find that's typically not needed. So what we do is put this here. Like I said, the piece with the notches is on the inside, so that on, goes in on the back. And then this one with the Allen head is going to go in on the front. And then we just take our Allen wrench here. And we start tightening that guy up. And my experience has always been that once you get it snug, that back piece tends to stay in place and you can actually just go ahead and tighten it down and there's no tool usually needed for the inside. This also gives me a chance to talk about gears a little bit while I'm putting this on. Uh, so we're using a 7-speed derailleur for this bike. Uh, basically there's a bolt right here and that screws directly into our derailleur hanger. There's a little notch on the back side. You want to make sure that notch is sitting above this flat spot here. Um, so you can start it. And once you get on a little ways, there we go, uh, then you can just rotate that down to where it hits and that's where you want that to rest. Now what I was going to say about the gears is that we're putting seven speeds on the back and we're only putting a single speed up the front so just a total of seven speeds and that might seem low for a typical bicycle uh, especially when you've got uh, all the you know pedal bikes coming out with a 1x10, 1x11, 1x12, you've got mountain bikes that have been off crazy things like uh, 3 speeds here, 9 back here, you know, you got 27 total speeds, 30 speeds, all these things going on. Um, but when it comes down to it, when you have a motor back here, uh, you're not going to shift as often, for one, and you just don't need quite the range of gears. So, to keep things simple, I like to go with a 7 speed if you get to a little bit, you know, section that's a little bit steeper, uh, you're going to use a little more motor power. Just get up and over that hill. Uh, if you're going, you know, higher speed on an electric bike, uh, you can reduce the power and pedal a little more, put a little more power on, pedal less. It really gives you a lot of flexibility in how much leg power you're putting in or how much motor power you're putting in and a wide range of gears just isn't needed the same way it is on a pedal bike. Since we're at the back side of the bike here, we're going to go ahead and put the kickstand on. And it's really useful to have a kickstand on an electric bike because they're heavier. So when you stop, it's nice to be able to just put that kickstand down and let the bike be. Uh, you'll find yourself going more places. You might run to town, go to the grocery store, uh, all sorts of places where there may or may not be any infrastructure whatsoever to stand a bike up somewhere. Uh, so kickstands on electric bikes are just really handy. I find uh, that they're usually included, whereas other mountain bikes and things, that's kind of a faux pas to put a kickstand on a bike nowadays. Uh, but very useful on these. You have two holes here. These are not threaded. The holes on the kickstand are. So the kickstand goes on the inside of the frame. And on the two bolts we're going to use, we use a lock washer to make sure that kickstand can't wiggle loose. So we'll slide that through there. And we can get 
one of them started. Then we'll get the second bolt with its washer. Get that started by hand, and then we can go ahead and follow up with our wrench and tighten those two bolts up. Now let's jump back towards our bottom bracket that we first started with and put on our cranks. Now we can't forget that we have our pedal assist sensor here. There needs to be something to trigger that sensor and that's what this magnet disc is for. And if you look closely on it you can actually see there's some arrows that show you the direction. Um, so that's the direction that you're pedaling and then the magnets you can actually see them on one side we want those to be closer to the sensor. So this just slides on. It's just a press fit, just like that. And then we're gonna go ahead and put our crank on. And something you should know about the bottom bracket spindle here is that it's tapered. So as you tighten that crank down, it's gonna get tighter and tighter, and it's gonna hold it firmly in place. So we put that there. We have our bolt, and the threads on these are not reversed or anything unusual. Righty, tighty, lefty, loosey. Uh, it is a 14 millimeter metric bolt in this case, and that's one of those things that is going to be metric. And always assume anything on the bike is going to be metric. Now we can feel it scooting on and getting tighter and there we go and then we're going to do the same for the other side and of course make sure that when you put the other side on cranks facing the opposite direction Now that's tightened down, should spin freely. And just another finishing touch is a crank cap that keeps dust and dirt and everything from getting in there. Some of these are tighter than others. You might be able to push it in by hand, or this might be another place for your plastic hammer just to give it a little tap and get it put in on both sides. to this point I find that the easiest thing to do is to actually pause remove the bike from the stand we're gonna flip it over set it on the handlebars and the seat on the floor and then we can put the wheels on now you could install things like the brakes and brake lines and stuff on the handlebars but if you do that now uh, some of those things are going to get in the way, so it's a much easier, much simpler process if we flip it over now and actually get the wheels put on. We've got to do a few things with the wheels first, but for now we can take the bike off of our stand. So we'll loosen up our clamp here. We can set our stand aside. And we're just going to set it upside down like this. Now, if you have a concrete floor or a rough floor of some sort, I would recommend sticking a piece of cardboard or foam or something underneath your seat so you don't scratch that up. You may want to do that with your bars as well. Thanks again for watching. If you're just tuning in, this is just one video in a whole series on how to build your own electric bike. So please make sure to subscribe, hit the little notification bell so you can see when the latest videos have come out. If you happen to show up in the middle of the series and you want to get back to the beginning, I'll put a link to the first one or other episodes in the description. And the previous video will be over here. And the next video I'll make sure to put over here.